what I just want you to do is you just use your strength and just like hit it against my arm here. You want me to hit you like it's a baseball bat? Yeah. Okay. Before we get into this episode, I just want to say that this episode is going to be a little bit different than usual. I'll be sitting down with these Buddhist monks to get insight into the mentality and discipline required to achieve these incredible, frankly, superhuman changes that they've achieved with their mind and their body. And I know that most people can't adopt the lifestyle of a Buddhist monk. So right after this, I'll sit down with a meditation and mindfulness teacher brought on by the sponsor for this episode who made this episode possible, Headspace, which makes the benefits of these practices approachable and available to everyone. I recently started practicing meditation myself to see what all the buzz was about, and it's completely changed the way that I live my life, even only practicing for a few minutes at a time. Some of the things I discuss with the Buddhist monks today sound impossible, but I've seen glimpses of this deep inner peace in my practices, and I'm surprised that I thought this was all just a bunch of empty hype beforehand because I've seen it myself, which is really weird to say, but is also very exciting. And I know Headspace is known for their meditation, but they go beyond that. They also offer sleep mode for more restful sleep, focus mode for mindful activity, and move mode for a mind-body fitness experience that helps strengthen yourself in all the ways that these Buddhist monks will be discussing today. And I know we haven't gotten into it yet, so I'm not gonna bombard you with stuff like telling you to to, to look for more info in the description or telling you that you can sign up for a free 60-day Headspace trial using code ANTHONY60 because we'll get more into that later, okay? But for now, let's learn from these Buddhist monks. Hello, Shihang Yi, master of the Shaolin Temple, Europe. Hello, Anthony, and thank you very much for this invitation. Shifu Shi Yan Mi, <laughs> founder and abbot of the USA Shaolin Temple. What does being a Shaolin master mean? To be a Shaolin master means you not only have martial arts skills, mm -hmm. you must have the philosophy, knowledge right. to share with different people. I've been training over 50 years. Over 50 years by now? Can you believe it or not? <laughs> can you believe, can you believe that? I started with the age of four doing, let's say, these physical activities already. Mm -hmm. The development, I would say, for me was gradual. I always like was part of it. What we all in, in encounter in our lifetimes is what we call suffering in all different types of variations. There are methods included, involved in these practices, which are helping you to overcome the suffering. And now this is a very important part. You can live a life and avoid suffering, but overcoming suffering is something different. Mm -hmm. Overcoming implies you felt it already, but found a way now to still deal with it, cope with it, and that same type of suffering is just not appearing anymore because mm. you have overcome it. Shaolin Monastery is a Buddhist monastery. You are not allowed to leave the monastery and you have many, many different rules that mm. you need to, let's say, abide to while you stay inside the monastery. If you want to develop something, if you want to attain a new skill, let's just say you want to learn another language. The quickest way to learn this language is for the next 30 days, you take care, you have something to eat, you have enough sleep, and the rest of the time you study. Mm -hmm. You don't watch television, you don't go on social media, you mm -hmm. don't play any games, you don't go out on party, you don't drink alcohol, you don't take drugs. You sleep, you eat, and you train. We hear a lot of things that almost feel like myths about what people who practice Kung Fu to the level to become a master are capable of. We hear about finger punching, about the iron head, about you know, having bones that are stronger than steel. Have you experienced any of that? Have you witnessed anyone that has? I just let you feel. So or maybe, I don't know if you have something to hit there. Oh boy, you want me to hit you? Oh, you can take a piece of wood. Are you for real? Yeah, take take any piece of wood there. Okay. So, okay. What I just want you to do is you just use your strength. Just imagine this would be your arm and just like you, you hit it against my arm here somewhere on this. Right here. You yeah. want me to hit how hard? You, you start. Really take it. 
take it really strong like this. <laughs> you want me to hit you like it's a baseball bat? Yeah. Okay. I'll hit medium first and then I'll hit hard or just hit hard? Go, you can go slow. Okay. Go. I feel go, like go, it's go, gonna, go, go. you think it's gonna go. Go. Are you kidding? This isn't affecting your skin? Okay. For real? Go? Go. I, harder? So how does it feel for you? It feels like I'm about to shatter this. I mean, like, <laughs> that's extremely hard. That's extremely hard. If you did that to my bones, I think that my arm would break. So that means now you can answer for yourself how it is. You can feel it's all okay. It, 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 feel, it feels superhuman. To, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, you could, you could see. Like, you could just see the way your arms look here. It looks... Like I could, it, the not just the musculature, but the the skeletal base. It feels like they're uh... something different. When it comes to the development of the body, the more on the outside something is like located, just like your skin. Yeah. The quicker actually it is to change something about it. Mm. Yeah. You are unhappy with your skin. Do a seven day treatment. After seven days, fourteen days, it's already possible to see some changes on the skin. Muscles, tendons, fascia, blood vessels, bones. The more deep you start to go inside, the longer the training will be needed. Mm -hmm. So when I talk about the mind, then in my way of how I understand it, it is so super fine, impossible to even put it into a form. Mm -hmm. And now saying that you are transforming the mind, changing the mind. It's the hardest out of everything. If you cannot even change the skin, if you cannot change the muscles, if you cannot change the bones, how do you want to know how to change the mind? If you unlock something about the mind, you unlock something at the same time simultaneously in regards to what is your body able to deliver? I read that when you were younger, you learned to break rocks with your head. <laughs> is that true? Is that just a myth? Was, that seems like a legend. I can break and break some my head anytime I want. Anytime? Anytime. Do you want to do it right now? Because, <laughs> <laughs> because for many years, you know, self-discipline, you have to challenge yourself in life. You have to discipline yourself. You have to encourage yourself. That way you can master yourself in our lives. You cannot change things overnight. You have to take it step by step and to be able to, to build it like this. <laughs> oh, you cannot overnight do this, yeah? You have to keep stretching your, your, your physical, stretch your brains, discipline yourself. You'd be able to do it. So that's not just physical, that's mental. It's mental, yeah. How so? When you stretch, you pain. You have mm -hmm. pain, yeah? Mm -hmm. You scare yourself. I can break in my body? You're not, absolutely not. Everyone has their flexibilities. You have to keep it. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain it to discipline yourself to train harder every day. Mm. Yeah. So it's about getting comfortable with the pain. It's exactly. about feeling okay with the pain. It's a part of life. You still experience what some might call pain, but you see the signal, you listen to the signal, and you acknowledge that you don't necessarily need to pay attention to it. You don't need to focus all of your energy toward, this is something that I need to escape. I need to run away and stop this. Yes. Is it worth it to stop your plan just because of this pain right now? Or is the achievement of your goal, whatever it is that you have put upon yourself, still worth to go over that pain? Like a simple exercise people know from the movies. You just stand in the so-called horse stance. Like? This? Squatting? Yes, with, like squatting with the feet a little bit more wide. Okay. Okay, like parallel the parallel. feet. Parallel. Okay, like this, mm -hmm. always good. And now try, stay like this, but take your butt in. Take the, yes, more, 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 more. Yes, so, arms like so. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now this position, you like stay for five minutes. Five minutes? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I think I got maybe 30. 35 seconds maybe in me? No. Okay, but just a moment, stay like this, yeah? Okay. You feel it's gonna get exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Quick. Every moment right now, you are torn between sit down and relax or use it and push myself. I have a choice. You have a choice. But the good thing is, you don't give yourself choice. 
and you just say for the next 20 seconds. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, <gasps> seven, six, five, four, three, two, there we go. So <sighs> that felt like a lifetime. And this is the thing why you need someone who guides you, who pushes you through, who helps you, who motivates you and makes it because he wants you to discover something, how strong you really are. If you weren't counting there, I would have given up 20 seconds earlier. If I would have given you the choice, you, have, you, would, you wouldn't even made the 20 seconds. Sometimes in different other traditions, we say, if you are losing the fire inside of you, life is over. So what do you need in order to live like life? We need fire. And this fire only comes also when we are using willpower. In order to stay the 20 seconds, you need willpower. And the more you have this, the more internally you start to, it starts to generate this heat, this mm. fire, this vitality. It is that vitality that makes you then push through things, even if it will become hard one day. It's this energy. And I can see practicing that over and over again can really sit with you throughout your daily life and remind you that you have a choice to continue. You are capable of more than you ever thought you could be. And that is a physical representation of a physical limitation that I thought I had. But that translates to the mind, to your thoughts. Yes. Now you start to understand for yourself the power that lies inside of you. And this is why no matter what impulses or you know, are coming from the outside, you realize them, but not like before. It's shaking you. Everything can come, but you can still always decide what are you going to do with it? You want to follow that emotion? You want to follow that impulse? Mm -hmm. Or do you say, oh no, actually it's not important. Let it go. You're able to see your limits and know a little bit closer where they are and how much more you're capable of. So when life throws all the shit it's going to throw at you, you are you're able to take a step back and, and look at that with you know, bringing in all the information without allowing yourself to go down the path of worry, stress, anxiety. Anxiety often nowadays, like the, related in a way to the fear of the future. And I love the fact that I don't know what's coming tomorrow. Just imagine you would already know what tomorrow, the week after, your complete life, what is going to happen. You already know everything that you see in the mind, how big can that vision be? Mm -hmm. It can only be as big as your ability of imagination and of vision. Mm. So that means if your mind is small, then small things can happen in your life. And if you think that all of this, this whole universe is just here in order to fulfill our personal expectations about life, I think this is not the proper perspective. I think that one alternative way to see yourself is we have been placed in somewhere and now it's for you until the end of lifetime to discover what exists here to be discovered. For example, I think you also know this symbol of this yin and yang, you know, I mean, it's a common symbol. Balance? Balance. Balance is key, so what we try to achieve, of course, is balance. Mm -hmm. But it also is uh, like standing or symbolizing another aspect, <clears throat> which I before mentioned, we want to get to the mind, but you don't approach the mind directly. We approach the mind by using the body. You want to know what is success? You don't directly approach success. Sometimes in order to start to know what is success, you will have to see and get to know the failure. Mm -hmm. Because only if you have this one and that one, then together they are harmonious. Mm. 
if you only are used to success, is one-sided. Mm -hmm. Where's the counterpart? Will it always swing back? And that is exactly what, in different ways, how it can occur, in different ways, how it's gonna, let's say, pay back. You cannot trick this universe. You've done this demonstration, and it's interesting when you, when you do this demonstration because it's just using physics to, to get this point across. Yes. Can you uh, represent <laughs> what you, uh, no. the demonstration here? It should just give you an idea, an idea of understanding how can I know for myself, for example, before I take a decision, mm -hmm. what type of decision should I take? Mm -hmm. So very often when we walk through this lifetime, there is either something that you like or something that you dislike. The consequence of liking for many of us is you see something and you start to have this positive feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like positive feelings. That's why positive feeling is something we would actually like to bring closer to us. Mm -hmm. You like your girlfriend, you like your boyfriend. So that means you want to keep her, him close. The person is here already. The situation is here already. What you are doing right now is you try to bring it closer than it is. Mm -hmm. You are forcing it to be closer. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the more you force it, we say in the Buddhist teachings, nothing stays as it is. So after you have a long way of forcing and pulling, mm -hmm. if then the time comes, then you see that the amount of what you started to force and pull, mm -hmm is just gonna like move in the opposite direction. You force something into a situation, into a person, mm -hmm. which is not how it is. How is it? That's how it is. Balanced. So it's there already. Why do you want to bring it closer? Mm -hmm. Enjoy right now what you have here. What about when you push things away, same? The more energy you, in, you invest in pushing and there it just like, at the same time, one day, if nothing stays the same, just swings back in that same amount towards yourself. So this is why we say, walking through this lifetime and learning, mentally leave the things as they are. The pulling part, this is nowadays easy. Our world at the moment is very much propagated into this direction that it is always about attaining. Nothing is about downgrading. Mm -hmm. Buddhism is about downgrading. And, and what this, are you downgrading? It's this nice image, I think. Look, for, um, often we use this picture that a, sm a small child coming to this world and it's like a clear, a clear glass of water. But once that happens, the parents come and put their drop of education already into the child. Mm. Then you go into the school system, the teachers put their knowledge into the child. Mm -hmm. The advertising, the newspaper, all of these things having effect and starting to fill up the child with ideas, with idols, with concepts, with judgments. And so what we say is, hopefully you are either having an environment that really takes care what they are putting into you, mm -hmm. but very often, we don't know what is entering us. Mm -hmm. So one day we just wake up and realize that we are looking into the world completely with strange ideas that are not helpful for us. And what is now what we regard as Buddhism? Yeah? And it is not a religion. It is about method to realize that I have looked into the mirror and I can see that I am full of dirt. And I would really wish to have a life where I can see more clear, where I am feeling more clear and where I am more clean. Mm -hmm. And now I need somebody who helps me in order to get this clean. This is not about what your parents expect from you, what the society expects from you. This is about you finally watch inside yourself and figure out, is it really like this, that the life quality is about the way how you feel? And if it is like this, then now comes the good part. It's because you feel it, it's in your hands. And this is where the journey starts. Mm. It's always the same person. It's always the same character who is walking through this lifetime. 
a character sometimes having different virtues that he's living by, mm -hmm. different guiding principles, and also different, let's say, internal abilities. Mm -hmm. Let's just say one, discipline. So what does discipline mean? Because I feel like a lot of people hear that and you know they're like, okay, it means patience, it means doing things that I don't want to do. Discipline means, for example, there's no excuses to make. Today is so hot, today is so cold. Mm. I don't want to do these things. I'm tired. I don't want to get out of the bed. Different kind of, you know, uncomfortable, not comfortable situation. Uh -huh. You have to understand yourself. Why I am here, ask yourself. Give yourself some questions. Stay in front of the mirror, look at yourself. I'm here with purpose. I must do something meaningful to myself. A lot of people are stuck with a feeling of maybe uncertainty about their purpose in life, about what the reason for their existence is, what their purpose is. To you, what is the meaning of life? To you, what is your purpose? Once I really heard a sentence that very, very much resonated with me. And that one was to not wait until somewhere the sense of life is going to like float around and you're going to be ready to grab it. Because what happens if this situation never comes? Or what happens if you see it, but you miss it? Does it mean then your life has no sense anymore? The most proper thing is to give a sense to whatever you are doing for yourself. Don't wait for anybody else to tell and to tell you what your sense is supposed to be. You have to find a sense and give a sense to the things that you are doing. You give purpose why you wake up. For me, I've seen that the best way for me to achieve any of these big goals that I have is to A, realize that I just want it, I don't need it. That allows me to see it with a very clear mind. And also that I don't need to make the biggest change in the world immediately to attain it. I can keep it in my mind and slowly make choices, small choices that are yes or no here, yes or no here, but I see that I'm making them to eventually lead to a bigger goal. And I used to approach life as having a big goal, needing to completely change everything and be the person that I thought that I needed to be to make the goal happen when now that I've eased up and allowed myself to just guide myself down the flow of life toward something that I think that's where I want to be. I think that's where I want life to take me rather than getting in that steam engine boat and going upstream and going against the way that the natural flow of life. That's when I've started to see my life unfold in a way that's very pleasant yes. for me. Is that kind of what you're getting at? Just before I, I came here, I just took a shower to look good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but there, there exactly came again. Just imagine, for example, tomorrow you wake up, all of this is gone. Mm -hmm. Your YouTube channels are gone, everything is gone. The thing is, I strongly believe it wouldn't matter to you. Because you just continue. You just start build up something new again. Mm. Why? Because it's embedded in you already. Because the character is there already. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, if people take all this, what you have, what has been built up now, take it away. Yeah, but there is something inside of you, me, many other people that cannot be taken away anymore. You also had a demonstration that you uh, were thinking about doing about alignment and harmony. Especially in this field of nowadays yoga, meditation, or what we call Qigong, what people practice. It is super important to learn and use your breath in the proper way. So which means, for example, as an, as an exercise, mm -hmm. you can just try and uh, test for yourself how, how much are you able to regulate the breath. 
And now I'm just breathing loud that you can hear it and that also like maybe your audience can hear it. But let's just see, for example, how much the inhalation goes. And the longer you practice, the longer these things become. Yeah? Regulating the breath really means you need to take time, you need to concentrate, you really need to readjust at all moments to release like tension inside of the chest, inside of the abdomen area, mm. in order to allow your body to take that much of oxygen, of air inside. Mm. So why is it important? Because you want more energy, you need more oxygen. What is it in general that brings you the most joy? I'm doing to share with people. I can see people change physically, mentally, life. That's the most richest gift to my life. Can you teach me how to properly show my uh, respects and a thank you? Traditionally, we had, for example, the fist and this. Mm -hmm. This was like traditionally the martial art greeting. It's mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. In Buddhism, we sometimes have both palms we place in front of the heart. Sometimes I used to think with this gesture, it's not the left brain, it's not the right brain. It's not about thinking. It's about feeling. That's why it's in front of the heart. Mm. So that is the second way. And the third way is this one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Hello, Eve. Hey, Anthony. Lead meditation expert at Headspace. How far back does your meditation practice go? So over 12 years now. I got really curious about the history. Um, you know, how long have these practices been around? Where did they come from? Our founder, Andy Pudicombe, he made the pretty extreme decision to go and become a Buddhist monk. He went to Asia, and so he studied in the Burmese tradition for around the first four or five years, and then ordained as a Tibetan monk. These practices have their roots in mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And I think it can be helpful to explain, like, what is meditation? What is mindfulness? Yeah. Because yeah. I, too, was like, is there a difference? And I always thought that mindfulness just meant being aware. But, well, like, to what extent can you give the best definition of meditation. Meditation helps to focus the mind to be more present, accepting, less judgmental, and less critical of oneself and others. Many folks I've taught or speak with think that they can't meditate because they can't clear the mind. Mm -hmm. They can't stop thoughts. Mm -hmm. And two things happen. One, you think you're failing. Yes. Which, which is a judgment in and of itself, which is what you're trying to let go of. And then secondly, it becomes stressful because you're like, why can't I meditate? Why can't I stop my thoughts? Yeah. When you take time to train the mind in meditation, you're actually putting some distance between yourself and mm -hmm. your thoughts and your emotions. At its core, the quality of mindfulness is you're really training the mind or this quality of being in the present moment, mm -hmm. in the here and now, with a soft and open mind. So if you're here right now, you're here. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking about something you've got to do next or rehashing something that has already happened, which let's face it, that's what we spend a lot of time doing as humans. Mm -hmm. We're always thinking forward mm -hmm. or 
wishing we could change something that's happened. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of our suffering and stress and anxiety can come from. Like anxiety yeah. is projecting forward, mm -hmm. worrying about things that could happen, but haven't happened. Yes. So mindfulness is, is really this quality of present moment awareness, mm -hmm. or more simply put, focusing the mind. I mean, you know, the saying mind over matter, yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot of truth in that. And when I was training for the London Marathon quite a few years ago and then ran it, and the last 10 miles were hell. Like my body was screaming, stop, stop, stop. And all I could do was just say to myself, put one foot in front of the other one foot in front of the other. And it was all in my mind. Constantly one step more, one, one step, step more. step more, that's one step more, just one step more. And that is the only way I got over the finish line. Mm. Because if I, you know, if I've been telling myself, you can't do this, you've got to stop. And it's amazing, we can surprise ourselves with how much we can actually do. But sometimes we do need a bit of extra help. Mm -hmm. along the way. We have um, a course in the Headspace app called the Basics course, and you can choose from three, five, or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'll say to someone, if they've never done any meditation before, start with three minutes. I was really know? surprised when I started using Headspace and there were two minutes, three minutes, five minutes sessions. Yeah. yeah. Because I always had it in my mind that you needed to take a half hour, an hour, two hours to actually see any kind of benefit. But even incorporating just a few minutes of meditation mindfulness yeah. each day has had huge benefits yeah. in my daily life. And there's actually a ton of science to yeah. back up what Headspace is doing, what yeah. meditation does. Yeah. Do you know any of the, the stats or anything off the top of your head? One of the studies we ran showed that just 10 days of Headspace um, can reduce stress mm -hmm. by around 14%. That's just 10 days. Of course, everyone is going to be different, um, but I think it speaks to you just 10 minutes consistently over time can see a fairly immediate change mm. in how you relate to stress. And one of the things that I'm most excited about is that Headspace is giving a 60 day free trial. For yeah. viewers of this video specifically, usually yeah. it's much shorter than that, but you could sign up for free and you can start seeing the benefits of what Headspace has to offer. You can use the code ANTHONY60 and get two months. Well, I feel like you can start to see huge changes in just two weeks. From my using it for just a short amount of time, I've seen such huge benefits in my life. All these ways of thinking that seemed just, to me at least, they seem so foreign and unattainable, Yeah, can actually be something that everyone can experience just with a little, little bit of time. I'm a friend of balance, even so I don't look like it. <laughs> Let's look for them. Yeah, this is funny. Some people already mentioned before. Sometimes I talk about balance, yeah. but then people take my picture. Uh -huh. And if you look at my face, my left side is like quite different than the right oh, one. Shoot. Okay. You yeah. See? Yeah. So what they say is, you talk about balance. Your face doesn't look balanced. How can you be balanced? 